build it for him. So we have to have the systems in place, and yet we have to become more modern and more web publishing um, features. So the announcement of my company, as it was announced to us, we replaced everything with Google, um, was a big, it's a, it's a big decision for one of the biggest vendor of editorial systems. The company I'm currently working for, the name is New Cycle Solution, um, is, um, exists only since three years and it was created out of four big editorial system vendors. So there's a private equity company which bought uh, editorial systems, or print systems you can say, of course they had digital co components. They bought it all together because they were cheap. At that time you can, could just buy all these. And they, so they bought them all together and then they reduced the products and stopped selling um, a lot of these products and kept with the best ones of it. But still in the market there are a lot of editorial systems of this company called New Cycle Solutions out there and producing papers every day. So, and then announcing that we will stop all our digital components um, and take in favor Google, and this the process which is going on right now, was quite a big announcement for the media industry. And almost at the same time, we had uh, Buddha just in the session before here, um, almost at the same time, Buddha announced um, its funder distribution of Google, and there are other vendors of editorial systems creating connections of their editorial systems and asset management systems to Drupal like Woodring, which is a well-known vendor actually for um, magazines. So the people of media publishing industry and publishing houses um, are looking at Drupal right now with quite some interest. And I personally, since I now dig into Drupal, I personally think they do this for very good reasons. I'm fascinated how Drupal open source can be developed and enhanced by different companies with shared interest. And I think that can solve the problems the newspaper industry is having, and they are having big problems. Um, with Google, the media industry can adopt technology faster and be more inventive, developing new business ideas. For me personally, digging into Google and the community was a very inspiring process. I want to share this a bit today and hope to infect more people in my industry with Google. Yeah, two last sentence now and then we dig into the stuff I like created with Drupal. Um, Drupal itself is a great system, but to me, the attitude to share, inspire, and learn from each other makes the real difference. I hope more of my media colleagues will follow. I think this is the best way to approach the challenges the media industry is going through. We can shape Drupal to become the best tool for newspapers, and I hope that this will happen. And um, yeah, now I want to to show you a little bit of what I did um, to Drupal Core, which modules I was using and um, what setups I did to make it a little bit more um, practical and appealing for, for an editor. And I had there, for doing so, I actually had four different, or had four different goals. And the first goal was to create better content lists. Um, I guess most of you know, if you open Drupal standard, just install that core, that your listing is quite different to what um, I've got here now. So I have created this content view just with the normal view module, which is possible. You can um, enhance it, you can restructure it, you can have, you can create multiple tabs up here. Remember this, for example, is the standard file mm, tab, and but you can now also create stuff like that so that you have previews, different fields here, the fields you want to have, that you have a media gallery with some modules, and then after you install them, creating a view to display this content right here. And we will go through that with quite, in quite detail because 
every single field I'm using here has a purpose, so to speak, and um, is needed or will help me in my workflows. So that was the first goal, to have more meaningful, better information in my views, also better search engine stuff up here so that I can filter better. Um, this is um, my um, goal number one. Um, the other um, big goal I had creating better workflows. Um, you may know that if uh, you have a standard Google, if you uh, create an article, you can do two things with it, basically, when it comes to workflow, uh, when we think about statuses of an element, which is uh, I publish it or I unpublish it. So two statuses, and that was, of course, not enough. There is the module moderation status, uh, moderate, uh, what is it called? Um, so uh, workbench moderation is the module called, and with that you can enhance the status handling um, greatly. Um, we see already a little bit of that. So in this listing here, I have this built as a filter. So this comes from this workbench moderation module. Um, and also I have um, every story indicates its status here in my listing. So that was the other um, important thing. Also I wanted to have something which is called scheduled updates. Because very often when you create an article you need to publish it to a certain date. And you don't want to do this manually. You finish your stuff and it should be published tomorrow or on Saturday to a certain date and you don't want to do this process manually. You are done, you say, okay, publish, but not yet. Um, I schedule that it will be published at an exact time in the future where, where it needs to be delivered, so to speak. The module also, which I was using here. And then I wanted to have that um, editor, uh, editorial people can pick easily uh, template-driven layouts. So first, in a newspaper, I don't want that everyone hassles around with um, styles and um, visualization of stories, but can pick from a list of predefined templates. I may should go right here, show it to you. Um, we see here just different styles. You have a, a top image style, so to speak. Then we have a portrait image style. And there is an issue with this picture here, and I'm going to fix that during um, the demonstration. And then I have here my mm, right image uh, landscape style uh, article, and um, I built a listing, a, list, a pop-up list, so that the editor, when he creates it, can say, oh, I want this style, or I better use this style here. And this was done um, with the panelizer module. And in my listing here, we see for every article which panel layout, which panel template I was using. So that was um, my uh, goal number three. I call it easy template driven designs for editor using the panelizer module. And I'll show you in the workflow now how that is then in the user experience. And then the other big thing was, of course, uh, image and also video and Twitter media type uh, management. In the Drupal um, core, it's very core, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, that was a bit of a shock when I first looked into it, that first you don't, do not even see a preview of the Drupal core. Um, secondly, you cannot reuse any media you have ever used. Um, and then that you have only very, very simple information about that. Now all of that changed, and I started with Drupal 8, right? Um, so I was in the beginning, um, I don't, didn't want to go back to, to 7, so this is my starting point. Um, so in 7 there were already, of course, some um, additional modules you could use to uh, enhance the media experience. And now in Drupal 8, we had a session in the morning about that, um, this initiative has become big. Um, it has become a core initiative even, so basic modules which will allow stuff like that. Um, that you have listings and you can design them 
however you want them, displaying the information you want, um, and um, showing the relations between um, an article and the media, um, being able to browse into your repository of media and all that stuff. Um, the basic uh, things are coming in core now. Actually, it's already in 8.4. We have um, one module, which is the basic of it, which is the entity module. So that images become a real doable entity, and that makes a huge difference as um, I can pick entities from all the other modules. Um, they know how to handle them. So I have them in views, and um, I have them in my entity browser and stuff like that. So, improving the image management uh, was my goal number four. Um, and I just listed down here what it changes for me all. So, um, it allows me to have metadata as I want to define it. Uh, and it can be different for every different media type, which is also important. For video, you want to know how long it is in your metadata so that you can see that. Uh, for an image you want to set a focal point, for example, and stuff like that. So, metadata, then media workflow, and it's nice because it's an entity, uh, the workbench moderation module, which I said where I, which I'm using for the status, will just work also for um, images and media. So I can also have a status handling like not please do not yet publish or this pe uh, picture needs to be tuned first or we first have um, uh, legal reasons to, to ch check before it can be published. So you can have statuses for media just, just as well. Um, so my media management is better and it allows me to create a browser experience. I will show you this later. And galleries, I can have media prop management. So, yeah, these were the um, big goals for me. And I'll show you that in a bit more deeper detail. But um, as the um, media initiative is such a big thing, um, I want just to show quickly what modules I had to use to get the images and the functionality you see in here, what um, modules I had to install. There are distributions where you get it bundled. One was the Thunder, which was introduced today. The other one is just um, Aquia's Lightning, so there you would have them sort of all together. We still have to do some setups, but you get all the modules I'm showing here. So the first very important thing, and the thing which will go in core, is the entity. So that we can have a media entity which allows all this, which is the basic and which makes all media the same as well. So on that level, media is, um, no matter what it is, whether it's a video, a tweet, or Instagram, or a file which is on the file system, or a media you're pointing on, a, on another site, they all have share some base um, Eigenschaften, what was Eigenschaften? Pro properties, some base properties, and uh, there you can use that. And then, of course, you want um, to use the features of each media type. Um, and therefore, we have these, um, then these um, different um, me media entity images, media embedded files, slideshow. These are plugins, they are called sort of plugins, which you plug in then to get the additional functionality. And this is also sort of, and it will not go so easily in, in core because this is always changing. I mean, we, we change features. The API has changed uh, how Twitter gives us the stuff and, and so um, So I had to use all these uh, different uh, plugin providers. And they help me also when I load the media to read out of, for example, a JPEG. Um, all the metadata information which is embedded in a JPEG. So that I have right away, just by loading an agency image, um, all the information, the caption, where was it taken, the picture, when, what agency typically deliver and have embedded in their JPEGs. So that's 
for example, um, what the special plugin provider for certain media then gives you functionality and um, special management for, for that special type of media. Um, then I was using, uh, then I have a module entity browser, we will see that later, that I can browse into and search in, in my repos repository. We have, have dropped some JS so that we can load multiple images. So all these uh, modules here uh, I was using to build what you will see in a minute. Okay? It's quite a list. And I found in the documentation on GitHub um, this nice explanation on how the entity browser works. And maybe I should show you the entity browser, how I was using it shortly before we really dig into that. So um, if I go here in any of my articles, and I make this from the page here, like in here, And if we go into the edit mode, now you see that we um, see images here, but I can select more image images, and then I get this little browser here. Okay, so I can search my images, and by the way, I could do the very same um, in the editor itself, if I rather want to place my image in the content which I typically, in most cases, don't want to do for newspapers, at least. Um, that's why I like that the feature can be limited totally, so I can control whether someone can do that or not, um, which is a nice feature of, of the editor. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the entity browser. And the setup is uh, quite complex, but um, it's also empowering you a lot how you can use that. So the first thing you can decide how you integrate this browser, your search tool basically, um, in your um, content type so that you can have different user experience. So you can have an iframe. I've decided for the model version of it. Uh, so it's nicely integrated. It doesn't pop out or something, but um, looks like it was totally um, part of my content type. Um, then you can decide um, different approaches how you want to display the entities, which are all your medias. And I decided to go for the view one, because that was the most powerful one, where I can really, using the view module, decide how my entity browser, or what my entity browser displays me. And I mean, the view module is one of the power most powerful and nice tools in Drupal anyway. So, um, I had right there the power of use to, de to design my um, entity browsers. Um, also, I was able to select whether I want them to have their tabs for different approaches, like whether I'm looking into my, um, in the images I already have on my system or upload new ones. So it's, it's pretty flexible and powerful and needs quite some setup, I have to say. All right. So now once I explained a little bit about my goals and uh, we have an overall understanding what I tried to achieve, um, I want to go through the teacher more um, in, in details, in detail and uh, explain what I wanted to achieve, how I achieved it a little bit, and um, go one by one here. So, um, I extended the content um, tab here. Um, standard Drupal would be to search for the content type. I added that I can also search for what I call in here sections. They are basically built as taxonomies, and then now I've displayed here this text taxonomy pieces uh, to use it as a filter. And also I require in my content type that every single article, when an editor writes an article, he has to decide for what section it goes. That's a requirement. So um, there it made a lot of sense to me 
that I had this year as a filter. And we can see also in my listing, I have them, I display in what sect, to what sections a story belongs. I build this as um, a sort column. And also I build it that, that you can just click on here and it brings you right to the section. It's just more convenient for people, of course, that they can jump from the listing into, into that section. Um, yeah, you can shift click, control click to select the things you want to have here. Um, the next field was, uh, the next field comes from the workbench moderation tool, which gives me all the statuses which I did set up for my system. So now I could search only for stories, for example, which are currently in the moderation status of draft. The other two things are where standard Drupal, I left them as they are, I can search for the title, I can search for languages. So these were my search capabilities and you can change them, add them in Drupal very nicely, very easily I think. Um, let's now have a look at the listing itself, at my columns. So with the title, the only thing I did different uh, actually to save space. Um, standard Drupal would have here a checkbox and then you can click on it and use it to open the story, right? And I made it just that I can open it right from here to, to save this little space here. Um, before I continue with my listing, I just want to explain shortly that this may be different of what you know from Drupal Core. This comes from the uh, moderation module um, because it uh, works on uh, revisions as well. So I have status of my article and I can, once I have published an article, I can decide to create a better version. So the moderation status is not just uh, this article is now in draft and now it's ready and now we want to publish it, but it's also about uh, which version are we currently working on, which version is currently published. And therefore you've got these four tabs. I will explain that later in more detail, just that you know um, why this looks different here. The next two fields are actually standard Drupal, who authored the story, and one when was it last updated. I already explained about the sections. The next column is about penalized layouts. I created these templates which editors can use. And um, I think the best idea is to show that shortly um, right on my uh, National Park section. So here we have these different styles. And so that you know what I did with them is I can now edit the story right from here. And I want to change its design using my panelized templates. And um, well, I have here a pop-up list where an editor can pick from what um, template you want to use today with this very story. And I could change it now, for example, to the article top image style. What is also nice, by the way, about that, I can totally decide who sees these templates. So I can decide some people see different templates, have a different set of templates, some people can use very complex ones, other only very you know simple ones, where these people cannot make any errors or so. So let's um, save that under the new or under this different style. And now basically we have um, the price canyon also as a top image right here. So then we have the moderation status. And um, I want to show you here some more advanced stuff, stuff with that. Mm. I go to my keyword section, and within my keyword section, I have two articles which are currently in the moderation status of draft. So not yet ready, right? But the next column goes sort of with it. Um, so one, two are in draft, not ready, but one is actually published. And this is, a, this is not a feature, uh, it's, this is not a bug, this is a feature, basically. Um, and it can happen if someone created a story, published it, and then you want to have a better version. And then you could go two ways, you could unpublish it, so you say, oh, it's so bad, you take it off and change it, and then get it back. 
or you say we leave it like it is for a while, we work on a better version, and as soon as the better version comes, I'm done with it, I'm going to replace that. And this is exactly what happened here. So the one who is published and um, who is in draft but published is in a working process, but we have a published version out there. Um, and I, you see, I named the title like current version. So let's click on that and check this story out. Uh, this is how it is currently published. It says current version here. Okay. Um, when I go on the edit button, I see I have. I'm working in here in a totally different version. The text is not the same as of the story which is published. And um, we also may see that better here in this listing that my latest version, that's why it is in red, is not the version which is published. Okay, that's really what I wanted to achieve. And if I look at the revisions, I, this is also reflected in here, so that um, the current version is not, or the, the first version is not the published version currently, but this one is. And um, let's change that now. Let's assume we do now the better version. Also, wait, change this here, get this here out. So now I'm happy with that version and I want, and you see it's in, in the status draft, and now I want to have it published. What I also like about the workbench moderation module is that it does, doesn't give me a list of all the statuses I have in there, but only the ones which make sense. So when I uh, I'm not published, uh, when I'm in draft, only needs to review and publish make to make sense. Let's say that. Okay, and now if we go to the, back to the um, content list. It was in Cuba, right? So, so don't let now we see we have both published and they they are also out there in this version so this has changed now and let me go back one more time to this story just so i think i didn't put the point across what is nice here now now that it is published the status unpublished makes sense before it didn't make sense because it was not published right so uh, I can decide um, what status are available. I can decide that per person. So some people have access to certain status steps, others don't. And also I don't give them all the time everything which is possible, but only what makes sense. And that's what I think is pretty cool and very um, high level status management um, I can think of. I don't have any more requirements. That's really nice and, and fine there. Okay, so this was my moderation status. Then we have this little picture of um, updates published uh, of, um, that I can um, create for every story some um, things I want to happen on them on a schedule. So we have here a date and a time, and I'm setting the publishing status here. I could do anything, any field I could change here, and uh, say I want this to happen to a certain time. There are seven, several scenarios for me. One would be the editor who writes the Saturday column. It should be published on Saturday starting at 8 o'clock. So he does that maybe on Thursday, he's done with that. Um, he can then in his uh, content just check this box and give it a date and time and say, okay, I want this to happen. But there's more to it actually. Um, there's a whole tab about that, scheduled updates. And this is the sort of the same feature, but now this time for bulk operations. So operations to multiple stories, multiple articles at the same time. Um, just wanted to show that there's more behind it. 
Um, so now in here, I could basically do more or less the same, but I can pick um, some more articles and then state the time and then say what you want to happen. And you see here, I want uh, I have different fields which I want to change on multiple stories. Now this module is um, for me not yet, or this part of the module is for me not yet totally useful because instead of a list of already existing stories, I want to be able to define a query in the database at that time um, to then find all the stories um, which are then available and then to do something with it. Because uh, as it is here, I could only do something with stories which exist now and I want to do something which with stories which will exist then as well. But anyway, it's useful and I guess I hope it's coming. So, just to mention that with the... Okay. So, and then of course we have the attached media. So let's click on one of them. And um, here I've got my preview and I, I've got my metadata. If I go to edit, I get it in a nicer web form. And um, you can build uh, the fields you want to see here um, as you wish. So this is in a setup. You can create um, the fields which are important to you and you can do it for every media type different. Which I think is pretty powerful because we need different information on different media items. Uh, what I also found or what I think is important uh, to understand that, for example, you may have a caption for um, a video as well as for an image and then use the same field because in your search engine which makes all your media the same um, if you would search for caption and a caption exists in a tweet, in a video and in an image you would get them all in the listing as well so here you should just not try to make every field, field unique every metadata field unique for every media type, but only when it is really unique. Okay, and let's open maybe up um, one of these tweets here. And here we see we have different information, and here we also see I, I actually was doing that, I was reusing the um, caption field. Now, what is nice, of course, is uh, that we can relate. So here you see there are some stories which have multiple images. Um, some have a tweet and an image, and we can have it all under one foot in one listing. And also I can display them here properly. And I can build um, my listings as I want to have them, so putting the metadata information together as I want to see that. That's all done in views. Once you have the media, the modules installed, you get fields there and then you just do it the very normal way in, in, in views. Okay, and um, what is also nice, no matter what kind of a media item it is, they are all entities and I can do bulk operations on entities. And some make sense for all images, even in a mixed, if you check a tweet and a video and a, a JPEG, uh, you could publish or unpublish it, which I feel is a nice workflow because very often um, an editor writes an article and um, the um, images I get to be checked or um, tuned or cropped or whatever, but the article should go out there. So he can um, publish the article, but if the media itself is in the status unpublished, it would not show up yet. But no one has to touch the article one more time, just because then a person will check the media or click the crop or whatever was needed, and then say, okay, now I'll publish it. If it was published with an article, now it becomes available. And that's the very same uh, module, the workbench moderation module kicks in there just as well. So we can have more than just published and unpublished, which is the Drupal standard 
Um, yeah, and I think there are some more ideas you could have what you want to do with images, like archiving them all on, in one go or stuff like that. Out of such a listing. Um, yeah, and then um, it doesn't matter whether you like it more like this or the other listing. You can build it. it has the same functionality. It's, it's just a different view um, which you design a little bit different. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to show you something about galleries. Let me go to um, this section here, my Hubert section. And here we see we've got um, yeah, three images and maybe a gallery would be nice. So this also comes with the new media thing. You can already have galleries. Um, I can go in here or I could go from one listing to the article. It wouldn't make a difference. So, but here I do it now from the page here. So we, right now we have three different um, images here selected and I just change my style and change it to the gallery style, which I build it also with, with, with the very same panelizer module to create my type. So, and now we have this little uh, nice gallery to play with, with this article. Okay, so, um, the next thing I would like or want to do is to create a brand new article so that you also see the creation of a brand new article. Um, let me go to my content list and add content. I select my article type here which I created and we go quickly through that. And let me just take note that text so that it doesn't look so silly. Okay. Okay, so um, this is how I did build um, the content type. I wanted to have a title here, so let me put in the title. Um, the next field I've got in here is a kicker. Um, so I'll put it in here and then I have a pop body field. And of course I could do that, uh, create my content type with the fields I want to have. I'm not using um, paragraphs, which, um, for example, um, the Panda distribution does, because I'm a little bit more thinking about newspapers than magazines, and therefore I want to have it more structured, and I don't want to give my newspaper people the same freedom you want to give uh, magazine people. So that would be a sort of a difference, because uh, on a data structure, point of view, um, paragraphs is to me anarchy. Like you can have your fields everywhere, you can add them, um, and then you will no longer be able to do this one click thing to change everything. So uh, of course you can have both, you can have both worlds in one system, that's not at all a problem, but for the very standards of everyday story which has to go really fast. And by the way, I of course, I'm thinking of this system needs to be connected to a print system as well, where Jim then can take the very same data and flow it in an InDesign um, boxes, which then automatically will design because of the parallel styles which are active in there, uh, because newspapers have to create pages uh, within a, a couple of minutes every day and um, they don't have the time a magazine or people who really design. So that's why I use basically this approach to um, keep it very structured, force people to do some stuff so I can rely on my data and know what I get. Okay, then we have here uh, my choice um, under which design I can have the article run. Um, let me publish this now right away. Um, I'm forced to pick a section, as I said already. So you can build the GUIs as you want it, but um, you can enforce fields. And now I also want to select some images. Okay? 
Now I can, uh, here I have all the types of my media and I can only search for images of course, but I could also search for both, clicking, clicking both, so that I get the tweets and the images. And now I can use my caption search for using only for cubula in the, oops, in the caption. So I get only mm, the images which are about it, and I rather want colors because I also want to tweet. Okay. And um, the next thing I, I can do is just select the images I want to have here. And uh, the entity browser is now better uh, um, than what I'm showing you today. Uh, I'll come to that back later. I still have here to go back and um, select. I cannot multi select. Okay, but this is available now. I just don't have it yet in my demonstration here. So this is how I can select my stuff. Oops. Now I've got three pictures, and if this is going to run tomorrow, I could um, make here a scheduled update. So these are these little features I have in my story. This is how that would work. Let's save it here. Yeah, no, I don't want to use this feature now, save it here, and um, yeah, here we are with um, a, another and a different style of this article. Okay. Yeah? Sorry, I'm trying to find the title on us. Ah, okay, it's from who? On the slash stuff, sometimes, but a little bit of the stuff, type it in and then I'll make it. Okay, yeah. It's a little bit better, like, dieses penalize, the penalize. The penalize, yeah. How was it done? How, how is that done? Yes, I don't know it. Yeah, yeah, it's a module you have to install, and there you can build um, like taking fields in, into design areas. Okay. That's that's what the penalizer. It, it's one of the function, functions the penalizer uh, enables you to do. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to come later, I can show it. Mm -hmm. Can show you the setups as well. Okay. But you will find it um, if you. Look for penalizer yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, these metadata from the picture, do you have to enter them by yourself, or can you read them from the existing information? Yeah. So this um, JPEG. The plugin provider, which is available currently, only reads the exif, so the, the camera data. Mm -hmm. I had to keep this in by myself, so I hope that this is coming that it also reads all the other information, like caption, author, and that stuff. It was not, in the version I was using, it was not yet there. Yeah, which is pity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the image stuff, you will see this coming along in, in core as well soon. So. Do you offer this as a distribution or something like that? Or as well, do you plan to do all this as a distribution? No, no, not, not me. I mean, I, I, I'm an individual. <laughs> <laughs> but they are um, versions. Um, so you can, a good starting point is, is Lightning from Apia because it's so easy to um, use, so um, just take it there. Then you have also some some very basic setups uh, already done in there, so that you don't have to invent everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you.